Hello, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. In the last few classes, uh, we have talked about a linear regression uh, model and logistic regression. So uh, we know about logistic regression is that logistic regression is used for classification. OK, so apart from logistic regression, uh, we can have a number of other uh, classification method. So which are often used for classifying the images classifying the objects in image processing in computer vision. So today uh, we are going to talk about uh, few other classification techniques. So we will be talking about classification technique base classifier. OK, next uh, we will be talking about Likelihood methods. Likelihood methods in likelihood methods, uh, we will be talking about parametric method and non parametric method. Parametric and non parametric method. OK. So let us start with uh, base classifier. So uh, let us consider uh, we have n number of uh, examples. OK, from X1, Y1 to Xn, Yn. OK, so since we are talking about supervised uh, learning techniques, so supervised classification techniques, so we will have uh, we will have n number of uh, n number of feature vectors or n number of samples uh, with n number of class level. OK, so if we uh, represent the class level. Small c equals to. 1 to capital C, OK. Why is getting equal? Why is getting equal? Then for uh, if we use this n number of samples for training of a classifier, then uh, for unknown sample X, so X represent the feature vector. So X is a feature vector. OK, and this feature vector is obtained from an image, either an, either from an image or uh, the object uh, which is found and uh, in a video or an image. OK. So here X is unknown feature vector. So we have to classify this feature vector as the class level. We have to classify this feature vector S as class level. That means we will infer, uh, we will uh, define a mapping function. So this that mapping function will map this unknown feature vector to a class level. So here the class levels are found from one to capital C. So capital C is the total number of class level and here small c is used for uh, used for uh, used for indicate the each class level separately okay so here so we will define a mapping function f over this feature vector over this feature vector x and this will infer a class small c that belongs to capital c okay so this mapping function will give us the class information about the unknown feature vector. That means we will assign this feature vector to a class. So it may be uh, the problem may be the image classification, problem may be uh, the face classification, problem may be uh, object classification. So any objects or any image or any uh, any other uh, any other 
uh, entity uh, will be uh, given to us for classification and we will obtain the feature vector from that entity and we will get the mapping function over that feature over the uh, obtained feature vector and we infer this mapping function to a class level okay and the, here the small c belongs to the capital c so we will infer the mapping function over this feature vector to a class level okay now we will talk about the base classifier so the first classification technique apart from logistic regression is based a base classifier and some preliminary uh, notations uh, we will be talking about so those uh, notations uh, we will use in base classifier okay so let us consider there are two events a and b okay and these two events are these two events are drawn from a sample space s okay now uh, if no information is available for about a trial of random experiment then uh, we can get the probability of then we can the probability of a probability of a when no information uh, about the other event b is available okay so in this case this probability of a will be called marginal probability marginal probability so here a and b are two events a and b these two events are drawn from the sample space s okay and if no information is available about the trial of the random experiment then we can get the probability of a as p of a okay and this probability is called marginal probability now if a uh, if the event a has been occurred then we can uh, then uh, then this event will affect the computation of the uh, computation of the probability that b occurs okay so we will uh, we can get the conditional probability so we can get the probability of b given a okay and this is called the conditional probability conditional probability okay so here the event a is already occurred okay and uh, uh, this uh, this event a will affect the computation of the computation of the probability that b occurs okay so therefore we get the probability b given a okay and this probability is called the conditional probability Now suppose uh, one of the two information or one of the two things uh, is to be known about how data are generated. Okay. Now either the class levels, uh, class levels which are drawn from a known conditional distribution on the set of class levels when the features are given. Okay. Now if uh, the feature set is represented by X and class level here the feature sets we will say this is the features okay and small c small c is given as 1 comma 2 comma capital c so here small c represent the class information of c number of capital c number of classes okay now the class levels uh, can be uh, class levels can be drawn independently from a known a uh, conditional distribution on the set of class levels when the feature x is given okay so therefore we can write p probability of capital y equals to small c given x for c equals to 1 to capital c okay for c number of classes so either we can uh, either we can 
So either either this information is known. That means this information means the probability of y equals to c, probability of y at c given x. So this is known. Either this is known or uh, the class levels which are drawn from a known marginal probability on class levels and features are drawn from known conditional distribution of features given the class. Okay, so we can write probability of y equals to c. So this is so this is the marginal probability. Marginal probability from which we can draw the class levels. Okay, either we can draw the class level from this conditional probability from p of y equals to c given x or we can draw the class levels from this marginal probability p of y equals to c okay and features are drawn from the conditional probability p of capital x given y equals to c so this is another conditional probability okay now this inform the uh, this is the uh, this is the probability of y uh, at uh, at class level c given x so this can be so this can be obtained from obtained from marginal probability and conditional probability okay so we can write probability of y equals to c given x equals to probability of x given y equals to c then we we are getting marginal probability y equals to c and divided by probability of x okay so what we are getting so either this or this that means we will have so we can get the class levels which are drawn from the conditional probability okay or we can get the class levels from this marginal probability and features are drawn from this conditional probability given class information y equals to c now the former one this former means the for the conditional probability that we are getting for the class levels can be obtained in terms of the in terms of the conditional probability from where we get the uh, feature information and the marginal probability from where we get the class level in uh, class information okay and we get uh, both these uh, terms multiplied with each other and which is then divided by the probability of x okay now for this relation uh, we can write probability of x given y equals to c probability of y equals to c okay and we will write summation summation over probability of x y equals to i okay so i varies from 1 to c capital c so here i is the i is the index for uh, uh, index for uh, representing the class level or class information okay and uh, this p of x comma y equals to i this is called the joint distribution joint distribution okay that means we get this summation over this joint distribution so uh, instead of writing px uh, probability of x we can write the summation over uh, this joint distribution and uh, further we can uh, further we can rewrite this relation as probability of x given y equals to c probability of y at c and divided by this summation over probability of x given y equals to i okay and probability of 
y equals to i. So what we are getting here, we are getting uh, in the denominator, we are getting the summation over uh, summation over summation over this conditional probability multiplied by marginal probability. So instead of writing this joint distribution, we can get the summation over this uh, summation over multiplication of um, conditional probability and marginal probability. Now, uh, in terms of Bayesian uh, classifier, if we consider the Bayesian viewpoint, then how we can interpret these probabilities? How we can interpret these probabilities? Okay, uh, let me write. If we consider the Bayesian viewpoint, uh, then we can uh, interpret marginal probability as prior probability. Okay, and uh, prior probability that the class level C uh, for a new datum. Okay. So if we consider a uh, data, uh, if we consider a, uh, if we consider data uh, as capital X, then we can consider a particular datum and for which the class level will be found as C, small c. Okay. So we get this uh, marginal probability as the prior probability that the class level C uh, will be uh, determined uh, for the new uh, datum. Okay. And this is the marginal probability that uh, we are considering and this marginal probability is considered as the prior probability. If we consider the Bayesian uh, viewpoint, then we can interpret this marginal probability is marginal probability as prior probability. OK. That for the class level uh, class level C for a particular datum. And this probability y equals to y equals to c given x as the posterior probability. So we get this probably conditional probability as posterior probability. Okay. So this posterior probability uh, that we can estimate when the feature vector x is given. Now, if we consider a particular datum, datum particular datum that belongs to capital X, this feature vector, then we can get the particular class for this datum which belongs to capital X. Okay, And we get this uh, conditional probability as posterior probability. Posterior probability. Okay, So we get the next, uh, we get the, uh, we get the future evidence or the next evidence when the feature vector x is given. Okay. Now we will compute uh, the risk of this classifier. Okay, so we have already uh, defined the base classifier. Now we will now uh, we are interested to have the risk as expected loss. Okay, so now we will get the risk. Okay, so risk uh, can be defined as the expected loss. So if we def uh, if we denote uh, the risk by capital R C given X, that means here we are trying to if we are having an unknown sample X, then we will be interested to have uh, we will be interested to predict the class level of this feature vector X. Okay, if this is the unknown, so therefore. Uh, by uh, the predicting uh, predicting the class level x will uh, uh, predicting the class level x will give us this risk r of c given x okay so this is nothing but the expected loss so 
the expected loss is given by we can write e y given x okay so l of y c so here y represent the class level and c represent a particular class that we are going to predict for the unknown sample x okay so here we can write for the expected loss we will get the summation so we can write i equals to 1 to capital c okay and here we will write i comma c and probability of y equals to probability of y equals to i given x okay i given x so in place of uh, in place of this uh, in place of this representation e y given x of l of y comma c we can write we can get the summation uh, summation over uh, summation over the, the loss function so loss function is represented by l of i comma c okay which is multiplied with the uh, which is multiplied with uh, this conditional probability or uh, we can say the posterior probability that we obtained in the base base classifier okay so uh, we just saw that uh, how to obtain in the uh, how to obtain the posterior probability uh, when the prior probability and likelihood are given okay so if we uh, if we uh, already obtained the prior probability and uh, the likelihood and then we can obtain the posterior probability and this posterior probability uh, posterior probability can be used uh, to obtain the risk as expected loss when it is multiplied with the loss function so we get the loss function then we uh, then we then it has been multiplied with the posterior probability and we can rewrite this so further we can rewrite this relation as the summation over l i comma c okay l i comma c and then in place of posterior probability so we can write the earlier relation the probability of x given y equals to y equals to i okay probability of y equals to i and which is divided by summation which is divided by summation over now we are writing j probability of x given y equals to j and probability of y equals to j okay so here you can see that in the numerator uh, we are multiplying uh, the conditional probability and uh, prior probability so this conditional probability if we uh, if we get this conditional probability multiplied with the prior probability p of y equals to i then this conditional probability is nothing but the likelihood now uh, what do you mean by likelihood if we want to uh, if we want to have this likelihood in this prior probability then uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can explain this uh, likelihood uh, with an example now let us consider uh, we are flipping a coin and we assume that the the coin is found to be fair and uh, we are flipping the coin and if we are flipping the coin for 100 times and if we get uh, 75 times uh, for tail and 25 times for head then uh, we can say the probability of head is uh, 0.75 a probability of tail is 0.75 and probability of head is 0.25 but if we uh, if we consider the likelihood for this event then uh, we can say the uh, we can say the uh, the likelihood uh, likelihood of good estimation is found to be low why because if we are uh, if we are biased towards uh, uh, to towards the outcome of head, then we can say that since uh, 
when we are flipping the coin, we are uh, getting 25 times uh, head and 75 times tail. So therefore, uh, we can say that the likelihood of likelihood likelihood of uh, good estimation is found to be uh, 0.25 or 25 uh, percent. Okay. So this is the likelihood. This is the difference between likelihood and the probability. So there is a slight difference between uh, these two uh, entities, but uh, here we get the conditional probability P of X given Y at uh, I as likelihood, which is multiplied with the prior probability. And then uh, uh, we get uh, summation over uh, summation over the prior probability and uh, prior probability and likelihood uh, in the denominator. OK, and this ent this uh, this entire thing is found to be multiplied with the loss function. OK, if you remember the loss function, if you remember the loss function in cross entropy, uh, cross entropy uh, formulation for logistic regression, then uh, there you can see that loss function is multiplied with the uh, class information OK, or class levels. So similarly, here we get uh, the risk as expected loss, uh, which is given by summation over this loss function multiplied with the posterior probability. OK. Now. Uh, we can say that C uh, risks are of C given X. Is proportional to. This uh, summation over. So I equals to one to C this summation over loss function I comma uh, loss function L of I comma C and probability of X given Y equals to I and probability of Y equals to I. Okay. So therefore, we can say the constant of proportionality being the recipro recipro reciprocal of PX. Okay. Now, what is PX? So PX. So here the PX is the prior probability that we get in the denominator. OK, so instead of writing PX, what uh, we wrote, we wrote the uh, summation uh, over the multiplication of uh, likelihood and prior probability. So here uh, PX can be given by summation over I equals to 1 to C probability of X given y equals to i multiplied by probability of y at i okay so uh, we have first we have obtained the base classifier as posterior probability then this posterior probability is used to get the expected loss okay and uh, after obtaining the expected loss. Now we will interested to now uh, we will be interested to minimize this expected loss. So then the objective function this this R of uh, C given X becomes the objective function. Objective function, and this objective function need to be minimized. Okay, need to be minimized. So uh, to minimize the risk function, so we can write if cap base of AX equals to arg min. So arg min C belongs to 1 comma 2 comma up to capital C. OK, and now we are writing the risk function R of C given X. OK. Further, we can write this. Admin C 
C belongs to one comma two comma capital C. And instead of writing this uh, representation R of C given X, we can write the representation for expected loss. So both will be found to be same, but uh, we can uh, change the notation for our convenience. So we can write uh, expected loss E of Y given X, okay, of A log Y comma C. So this is the uh, so this is the representation for uh, getting the objective function or the risk function to be minimized. Now we will apply the optimization and we will go for a uh, uh, go for a number of uh, iterations and with that iterative uh, uh, iter uh, with that iterative way we can minimize the function. So we will get the optimal uh, optimal value. For this, uh, uh, for this risk function or the expected loss, and uh, we can minimize the base classifier when we get the error to be minimum. Now we will be talking about likelihood method. Okay. Now we'll be talking about the likelihood method. Now, what we know about likelihood method is that the likelihood method is used to approximate the likelihood function. So how uh, how do we get the likelihood function? So we get the uh, likelihood uh, as the probability of so p of so this is the conditional probability that we have obtained in the posterior probability equation in base classifier. So here, if we write in simple form, uh, then we can get probability of y co given x, okay, equals to probability of x given y, probability of y divided by probability of x. Okay, so this is the uh, simplified form of base classifier. Now this this conditional probability probability of x given y is called the likelihood. So this is the likelihood. This is likelihood. And this is actually the marginal probability. Marginal probability. And this is called the prior probability. Okay. Now, if we uh, apply the likelihood method in order to approximate the likelihood function, this likelihood function, then uh, this approximation will be uh, done separately for each class, each class C. Okay, and uh, this approximation will uh, will be done either by either by having a specific parametric form. Okay or uh, parametric form for this particular uh, distribution and uh, uh, also using the training data. Now, uh, either we can uh, get a specific parametric form uh, for this particular distribution or we can fit a non-parametric model to the training data, okay, for each class. Now, if we consider uh, the class information C that belongs to that belongs to C number of classes, then for each class C, we can get the approximation by likelihood method. Okay, so we can get the likelihood uh, likelihood appro likelihood uh, approximation uh, on this likelihood function p of x given y. Okay, so uh, so either we can get the specific parametric form for this distribution, or we will fit the non-parametric model to the training data for uh, for each class 
uh, C. Now, if we consider the parametric form, so parametric form is having fixed number of uh, parameters. Okay, but if we consider non-parametric uh, non-parametric form, so non-parametric model will consist of flexible number of parameters. Now, if we consider the parametric method, then uh, we can have a number of parametric method. So one such parametric method is linear discriminant analysis, okay, quadratic discriminant analysis, and other uh, parametric method uh, may be Gaussian uh, mixture model. Now let us uh, now let us consider. Uh, we will uh, start from likelihood method itself, and we will try to understand how likelihood method uh, uh, can be used can be used uh, in parametric uh, models uh, to estimate to estimate the or uh, in order to approximate uh, in order to approximate the likelihood function so how likelihood methods can be used and get the approximation for uh, for a particular uh, class c now let us consider that uh, some data uh, some data from cth class is randomly drawn from a distribution of likelihood p of x given y okay on the sample space x so if we get the tilted x so this is the this is called the sample space sample space so we get this uh, sample space and from which we can draw the data from the cth class so if we consider there is a particular class c so from that cs cth class we can uh, draw a data from this sample space okay now the likelihood based classifier uh, is used to uh, this this likelihood based classifier will use the training data in order to compute the estimate so what will be the estimate if we consider the estimate is p cap of x given y okay so this is our estimation for a particular class c okay then uh, so this estimation is this estimation is performed uh, for a for the particular distribution p of x given uh, y so given the marginal or prior, uh, prior probability of the classes p of y equals to c then the posterior distribution of the classes will be estimated by we can write probability of so this is the estimated posterior probability so we can write p cap of y equals to c given x okay so p cap of x given y equals to c and then we then we are writing the prior probability or marginal probability p of y equals to c and in the denominator we will get the summation we will get the summation over the estimated likelihood and marginal or prior probability okay so what we are doing here here uh, we are uh, getting the uh, we are getting the estimation of the posterior probability in terms of the likelihood uh, estimated likelihood and marginal probability okay the this equation will be found to be same as that of the base classifier but uh, what we are doing here we are uh, we are trying to we are trying to use the uh, likelihood methods in order to approximate the likelihood uh, function okay so if the likelihood function is given to us then from that uh, distribution we can estimate the likelihood uh, we can estimate the likelihood and that likelihood will be used uh, in order to get the uh, 
estimation for the posterior probability okay so this this equation will be found to be similar uh, that of uh, base classifier but here uh, we are trying to approximate the likelihood function by likelihood uh, by likelihood method okay and here we are uh, considering uh, likelihood uh, approximation the likelihood uh, function for uh, each class c where c belongs to uh, capital c number of classes okay So let us see what are the different methods are available uh, as parametric method and non-parametric method. So if we consider the parametric method, so uh, we are uh, we are classifying the likelihood methods into two different groups. One is the parametric method. Okay, and another group is known as non-parametric method. And as I said that parametric method uses fixed number of parameters and non-parametric method uses uh, flexible number of uh, parameters. So therefore, uh, what we are trying to do, we are in parametric method, we are trying to obtain a specific uh, parametric uh, a specific parametric uh, model uh, for the uh, for a particular distribution and using the training data we can uh, get that uh, parametric uh, model for that uh, for the particular uh, distribution but in case of non parametric method we are trying to fit the non parametric uh, model to the training data or the training set for a particular class. So what are the different methods? Uh, what are the different parametric methods and non-parametric methods are available, which are uh, which are found to be the likelihood methods? And we use the initial uh, initial idea of likelihood methods in both this group of parametric and non-parametric methods. So what are the different methods are available? So we can get the quadratic discriminant analysis as parametric method, then we get linear discriminant analysis at parametric method. We get Gaussian mixture model, which is popularly known as GMMs. So quadratic discriminant analysis, linear discriminant analysis, Gaussian mixture models are found to be parametric methods. And what are the different non-parametric methods are available? So if we consider the non-parametric uh, method, then we can uh, say, we can see the kernel discriminant analysis. So we sort uh, in shortly we can say the KDA kernel discriminant analysis. We can we can have histogram histogram method. Okay. So these two are the popularly uh, these two are the popular non-parametric uh, likelihood methods. Now, if we consider, uh, let us uh, let us consider. The likelihood function again if we consider likelihood function for a particular uh, for a particular datum small x given y equals to c is a gaussian den gaussian density okay so if we if we uh, if we consider this likelihood function p of x given y equals to c is a gaussian density and then we can write p of y p of x given y equals to c so this is given by we can write phi of x given mu c and sigma c so what is c c is the class information uh, class information for a particular uh, datum x Okay, now or, or or better to say this is our feature features. This is our feature set. Okay, now 
if we get uh, if, if the class information is already available or provided then uh, based on the class information we can obtain the gaussian density uh, p of x given y equals to c as phi of x given mu c comma sigma c what is mu c so mu c is the mean okay and what is sigma c so sigma c is the covariance 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 matrix okay so we can write so uh, phi of so phi of x given mu c comma sigma c so this representation is used for gaussian density so further we can write further we can write so phi of x given mu c comma sigma c is given by so we can write 2 pi sigma c to the power minus half okay then e to the power half x minus mu c transpose sigma c inverse x minus mu c so you, here we are considering a single uh, variable or univariable function so this so this gaussian density uh, is considered as the univariate function where x is the only variable now uh, x is the now if we consider uh, if we consider x is a feature vector then that means there will be an there will be a, a number of points or if we consider the uh, if the dimension is the n then there will be n number of points and for this n number of points first we will determine the mean then covariance matrix and further we will get this mean and covariance matrix into this gaussian density equation okay so this is the equation for the gaussian density now uh, if we try to uh, if we try to get the mean so this mean will be given by 1 upon nc okay 1 upon nc and we can write i equals to this summation will be computed over this x side okay so we will get i equals to 1 to n and y i equals to c so what does this mean this so uh, we can uh, we can get this nc as the number of training data of the class c so if we get if we get a particular class c and uh, particular class c and if we get uh, there are uh, uh, there are more than one uh, instances are present then for those instances so those instances will be uh, considered as the training examples for a particular class c therefore we will get the uh, we will get the uh, mean for particular class c which is given by 1 upon nc and the summation will be computed over xi okay so this xi is the features feature point uh, uh, feature point in the feature vector which is associated with class c okay which is associated with a particular class c so therefore uh, now we can uh, and uh, we can get the covariance the sigma c so we can write this sigma cap c equals to 1 upon nc and we will write we will take the summation for n number of points so we are writing y i equals to c i varies from 1 to n and we get this summation over x i minus mu c so we use this uh, mean uh, in order to in order to compute the covariance okay so here we get the covariance by 
taking uh, the uh, taking the deviation uh, between taking the deviation between uh, mean and each data point so we get uh, this deviation and we get the transpose of this deviation and both are uh, multiplied and then we get the summation over this multiplication okay and finally uh, this multiplication will be the result of this multiplication will be divided uh, by this number of total number of uh, training uh, examples for a particular class c so if we get this uh, mean and covariance then uh, we can uh, easily estimate we can easily estimate this gaussian density as as the quadratic uh, discriminant analysis so uh, why it is called quadratic uh, discriminant uh, analysis because uh, when we uh, when we get the partition of feature space into different regions then they are uh, they are predicted as the piecewise quadratic surfaces so that is why this uh, that is why the name of uh, name of this uh, name of this likelihood method uh, is uh, quadratic discriminant analysis okay if you have any questions you can ask me otherwise we will continue this class continue the discussion in the next class okay that's all for today